friends, this is Sarah Soil Plant and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who watch my Halloween special video, um, it was basically me propagating my plants. There were some questions on what have happened to all the plants that I cut and how I'm going to propagate them and everything like that and I will certainly get into all of those details. But first I'm going to just show you kind of where everything is in this exact moment. Right after I made that video I pretty much put everything in water uh, just to hold it over until I decided what I was going to do with all of them or how I was going to choose to propagate you know, in the future just to make sure they stayed alive while I was kind of making those decisions. So I'll start off with one of the plants that is doing very well, it's doing just fine. Uh, it's propagating in water and I'm probably gonna leave it and that is my Monsteras. So these are the Monstera Deliciosas, the standard variety. Um, I cut off a piece off of both of the Monsteras I have, so there's two pieces in here. Oh, these are so gangly. It's always hard to get these in frame. So we have this one, which is a little bit smaller. It's only two leaves, and there are my kind of two nodes there, and both of them are underwater just to see which one will propagate fastest. And it looks like I'm actually getting a root on this lower node down here, so that's perfect. And this, you know, both of these I'm planning on putting them in the same pot eventually just to make a nice full monstera and actually I probably will put it in with the monstera that this plant has come from. It was getting really, it was one stalk and it was getting very long and straggly so I want to have maybe three plants in there so as it grows and gets bigger it'll be even more bushy and when it gets kind of long and scraggly it won't look quite as gangly it'll have a little bit more heft to it and look like a nice big meaty plant so that's what my plan is so this is the smaller of the two cuttings i took and this one i cut probably halfway down the plant and this one is doing really well gotta be very careful here so this one has four leaves on it i've got this one right here with some nice fenestrations this one right here uh, this one here, and then the one on top, which is right there. So these are the four leaves on this one, and it's got one, two, three, four, five nodes on it, but I'm planning on, act, like I said, making this into its own plant, and it definitely looks like I'm gaining some rootage here. Um, I've got one, two, three little roots springing from the very base of this aerial root right here. So that is awesome. And if that is the only place it's gonna spring roots and it's not gonna spring any down here, I will probably chop this um, right before I plant it, but we'll see if it produces roots. If it produces roots at both nodes, it's just gonna be an even stronger plant, so that's all fine. So I will put these back. All right, so that's my Monstera Deliciosa. It's in water. Um, Monster Deliciosas are really easy to root in water. Um, I would say for just the standard Deliciosa, I would root it in water probably all of the time. I would never put this in moss or anything like that just because this is a lot easier and it certainly works this way. There's other methods for different plants that work better. Um, I just know that for Deliciosa, that's the easiest way, and it certainly has a high success rate. Propagate it however you want. These are just easy to propagate in general. So I'm gonna get this one off the table, because as gorgeous as she is, uh, she takes up a lot of space, and I'm constantly afraid I'm gonna smack her and knock the whole thing over. So I'm gonna set her on the ground over here. The next one I'm gonna point out is my other big one here. It is my Philodendron Flaminii. Uh, this one is doing pretty well. I had to find a very particular size of container to fit her in because it's very. this is not an easy plant to just stick in a glass because it's so top heavy it was tip over all the time but I also didn't want it like completely submerged in water so this has actually been like an awesome compromise and the roots on this one are already starting to come in. I just realized that I'd never said um, this is two weeks after I filmed that video, or just thereabouts, maybe like 
16 days, something like that. So this hasn't been very long that it's been propagating. So on this one here, I've got several, I've got three nodes and I've only submerged the bottom node in water. You can see here that these little red roots right here are the new roots that are coming up. And it's very exciting because this one I was super concerned about mainly because I love this plant with all of my heart. And if I cut off a piece and it ended up dying, I don't know what I would do with myself. I, I would be indisposed and just hysterical probably. So the fact that this one after two weeks is already showing very, very good rooting makes me feel very happy. So all the extra, I don't know the technical term, but when the new leaf comes out and there's that sort of leaf sleeve that's over the top and then it kind of peels away and that's where the new leaf comes from. On eyes and quite a few different philodendrons, that little sleeve just kind of stays there and it just kind of dries out and kind of falls off over time. I have some of that left over on this node and it's starting to get a little gross. So I kind of want to clean that off. But let me show you a close-up of these roots before I do that. Can you see all those little roots coming off? And also the gross, all the black is that sleeve that's kind of rotting away. But look at all these little tiny red roots that are coming off. And they're coming off sort of like all over the outside. That is so satisfying. And I love that their roots are red. Like how cool is that? I am gonna use a paper towel and just kind of very gently just like kind of rub and maybe pull that away. Any sort of like decaying matter you kind of want to take off anyway is just not good, generally speaking. I mean, some, sometimes nothing happens, but I am gonna be safe rather than sorry. And there'll be some left over. Like, I'm not gonna get all of it. Obviously there's this kind of like brown ring going on right here, and that's fine. I just wanted to get rid of anything that was extraneous. Ooh, that's a good word. Look at that SAT word. It's extraneous. Just to show you what I'm talking about, the sleeve looks like this when it's dry and it eventually just kind of, you know, peels back and comes off. But when it's underwater, it starts rotting away instead of just drying and decaying away. All right, so now that I've cleaned that off and showed you the roots, and now that it's completely covered in cat hair, just by nature of being in my house, um, I've redid, redid, I've refilled the water with clear, clean water, and I'm going to put it right back in there. And this one I am going to continue uh, water propagating because it seems to like it and it's doing a good job. And eventually I will plant this into soil and it'll be its own plant. And that is so cool. So there's like one particular angle I set this at in order to make sure all the aerial roots are underwater. I've got that one position and I will fill it a little bit more with water just to make sure all of that is covered. As a general rule of thumb, when I water propagate, one of the things I keep in mind is I try not to overfill the water. In this scenario, all of my roots that are growing or potentially could have been growing are underwater. But I didn't fill it all the way to the top. And that's not because, you know, I like obsessing over it or anything like that. It's because the more of the stem you have underwater, the more likely you're going to get rot and more likely it's going to have issues. I don't want the stems submerged in water if I can help it. So with a lot of these cuttings, I've tried to only put the necessary components in water and let the rest of it be out. Just a little tip, like don't just like submerge the whole plant in water pretty much. And this leaf is super floppy and I'm hoping it kind of re-hardens, but I think it's floppy because of the propagation, not because it's dying or anything like that because the other leaf is doing very well and the new growth is coming in. But this is the oldest leaf on here and it was great before I cut it and now it is just like super like flimsy and doesn't have a lot of rigidity to it anymore. Probably gonna end up losing this leaf, um, which is sad because it is gorgeous, but I do have this leaf that's doing very well and then I've got another one on like unfurling, oh gosh. I thought I lost it. I thought I lost it. Um, I have another one unfurling underneath. So it'll be fine. 
the plant will survive. This one being super flopsy, yeah, I'm probably gonna lose it. That's part of the process. I just have to get used to it. Now we're getting into like kind of the little itty bitty viney, all the little stuff. I have two different plants in here. I have my Enjoy Pothos or Pearls and Jade. I'm not sure which one it is. They kind of look the same to me. I've seen pictures online where they look different, but I have leaves that look like Enjoy and leaves that look like Pearls and Jade on the same plant. I think it's a scam. They're both the same plant. <laughs> I don't know if it's a scam. I'm just like, it's cute, so I bought it and it's a Pothos. So I have those cuttings in here, and then I also have the top of my Ficus Teneki in here. I will show you a clip real quick of the plant that I have taken this Teneki from. I am so happy that the stem where I cut, I have two new growth points, which is exactly what I wanted. So when you cut any ficus, but in this case my Teneki, what generally happens is right above where your last leaf was, there'll be a bud that grows and then it kind of comes out from there and it branches off. A lot of times when you cut a, cut a ficus, it'll actually branch into two, where you have one here and one further down the stem coming off, and then you have it look more bushy and more like a tree. And that was what I was hoping for. That was the real reason I cut my Teneki. While I loved it and I was so concerned that I was gonna kill it because I don't have a good history with rubber plants and this is the first one that's been doing well with me. So I was concerned about cutting it, but I really, really, really didn't want a Teneki where it was one stem growing and then sprawling because that can get leggy and it can get top heavy and snap and all sorts of things. Whereas if you have a ficus either you know, like a burgundy rubber plant or the Audrey or Tnicky or Ruby, any of those. If you cut it and it branches, it is much sturdier and it also just looks a little bushier and bigger. It's the same thing with my Monstera. I don't want plants that are a single stalk that just kind of look scraggly. I really want a nice, big, beefy, bushy plant, if I can help it. While this cutting is gonna be a single stalk, it, it's still gonna be cute, and eventually I can cut the top of that one, and then that one will branch, and so so on and so forth. So, so on and so forth. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Got those two little buds, and I'm so excited. That means it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. It's not no guarantee that it'll branch off into two. Um, there is a chance they can branch off into one, and in that case, you just kind of have to cut it again and hope for the best. So I was lucky that on the first shot, it managed to branch off into two, and hopefully that one will do very well. But back to this cutting. So I haven't looked at this since I put it in here, but these are the two that I put in this cup. Generally speaking, I put multiple types of plants into the same container. I've heard people say that pothos in particular actually help other plants root faster. I don't know if that's hearsay, made up, or anecdotal, what have you, but I figure, you know, it doesn't hurt to put them in the same thing, so might as well. So I haven't looked at the roots on these and the container is actually opaque, so I it's not clear, so I haven't been able to check and see if there's roots on this yet. All right, it looks like there are no roots yet, but that does not discourage me. I mean, like this is the cutting. Nothing has gotten droopy. Nothing has gotten kind of gross or yellow or anything. This is all very much, so when the leaves first come out, they kind of have like an off-white yellow look. So these top two leaves have a little bit of yellow, but the base leaves still have that nice creamy white color. I was wondering because of how low I cut and this leaf right here is branched so close to the bottom. I was a little curious if this bottom one was going to break off or if it was going to die on me. I figured I'd leave it on there and see what happens and this one it looks just fine. Um, nothing's bad is happening to it but there's not a ton of activity. This one is completely fine and I'm happy with that. Enjoy slash pearls and jade pothos. Let's take a look. There's a little bitty root starting on this one but it is like itty bitty micro size coming off from one of these aerial roots that it has on the very end there. So that one is moving along. This one, so this one hasn't done anything yet, but the plant still looks springy and healthy and not droopy. So that one's probably fine. And then this one, there's also no root yet. My Monstera and my Plumini, I rooted right away. These ones are taking a little longer. 
No reason to get discouraged, but these ones I am gonna keep in water. Uh, these ones I keep right next to where my ficus tunicae is to give my ficus cutting the best shot possible. And it loves getting a lot of light. So I wanna make sure I give it as much light as humanly possible. Pothos in there and I'm going to kind of shove this one right on top and then top off the water a little bit because it's on the low side. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. And when I say fun stuff, I mean, we're actually gonna not keep in water. I have a few cuttings of things that I wanted to try propagating in moss instead of water. That includes my Cebu Blue cuttings and my Skindapsis cuttings mainly just to see how they do. I'm told that they propagate extremely well, really any method you choose. I just kind of wanted to try it and see if it would kind of multiply faster because my Cebu Blue in particular, whenever I put it in water, I tend to lose a lot of leaves. And so when I eventually plant them, they've got a whole like section that has no leaves on it. And it's just a bunch of nodes. So I kind of want to try chopping it up and putting it in moss and seeing if that does anything to make it grow faster, better, stronger, all of those things and make more plants and more bushy plants. Because Cebu Blue is one of those random plants that even though they're fairly easy to take care of and propagate, they're so hard to find and they're in very high demand. So if I can spread more Cebu Blue love in the world, I'll definitely do it. And I figure, you know, I've got enough Cebu Blue. My one plant that I had ended up being pot bound and I didn't have a bigger pot for it. So I just cut it in half and put it in two pots and both halves are like so happy. They were, that poor plant was like struggling hard. And when I took it out of the pot to see what was wrong, it was just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped in roots. It was awful. I felt so bad. I'm like, no wonder you've looked like garbage for just like the last few months. So I just like literally took a knife and just right down the middle, put one in a pot, put one back in the pot. It originally came in with more dirt around it. And that both halves are just like so happy. So I've got plenty of Cebu Blue. I don't need to keep it for myself. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna plan to chop these up and put them in moss. This one here, I've got my string of hearts cuttings, which are already starting to root and look so super cute. So those are all doing very well in water. And I've been wanting to try the butterfly method, but I feel like it'll be better if I have them rooted first. And then when I put them in a pot, then I do the butterfly method with each strand. So that's my goal. So for now it's gonna stay in water, but eventually I'm going to put it into soil. Uh, one encouraging thing, aside from the roots growing, is I've got new growth here and new growth right here. They're starting to grow and that's awesome. With my string of hearts, I have my um, Marble Queen Pothos. I noticed when I brought this out that this cutting in particular is floppy. Now when I say floppy, it basically looks like it needs water. It's, it's very droopy, it's soft, it doesn't have that firm spring that a normal leaf would have. You can see on the end here, and I'm discovering this as I'm talking about it, but on the very end it is rot. I'll give you a close-up here. So it's because this root at the end, or not the root, the uh, stem at the end here is completely black and rotted. So what I'm going to have to do is basically do emergency surgery and I'm going to cut this down here is what I was trying to root and I'm probably gonna cut in between these two nodes, lose this leaf, try to get it to root again. Before I cut any of my plants, I take my scissors and then I spray them with alcohol just to make sure all the germs and things are gone. And then I'm gonna cut it right where I said, just up a little bit lose these and then I'm going to cut off this lowest leaf here because it's going to die anyway. And so now I've got three leaves left on this last node up here and I'll put it back in water and hopefully it will root. I want to check on the other one as well. This one definitely feels better as far as lymph goes but it is on the lymph side. Not nearly as bad as the other one, but it's it's not great and there's no roots yet. And there is a tiny bit of rot on the end, not nearly as bad. Yeah, just a little bit of rot on the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, so this node right here isn't gonna take because of the rot. So I'm 
going to cut here and try again. So one thing I'm gonna try is dipping it in cinnamon. I put it in this little shot glass, like my little I Love New York shot glass. I am going to take both of these cuttings and I'm just going to dip, dip the end into cinnamon and see how that works. set them aside um, tomorrow at lunch something like that or tomorrow morning if I have time I might put those into water at that point last but not least I have my cuttings of more of my rare plants here because I haven't pulled these out and looked at them I try really really hard not to obsess because if I obsess I'll kill it so I've been trying to leave them alone for the most part and just checking the water level and that's it. This is my Monstera Standaliana runner. Leaves are beautiful, but it does not want to produce them. It produced this runner that is like three feet long without producing a single leaf. I just stuck it in water with the intention of eventually cutting it up and trying to propagate it because honestly, there's no point to having a runner like this without you know, just chopping it into pieces and hoping it produces plants, right? So when I pulled this out, there is one little root being produced by the, you know, part that was in water. So it is rootable in water, but I, I do plan on chopping this up and putting it in moss. I'll show you what that looks like and we can go through that process together, but this is definitely going in moss. And then the other two in here are my Adabapoenzi and my Varicosum. Like I said, I have not looked at this since I've really put them in here. This is my Adabapoenzi. And look it! Oh my gosh! So many little roots. You see those? It just makes a little like root tree. It's so happy. That's amazing. And then there's another one coming on the other side. So this one definitely rootable in water and just because of the size. So there's two different methods with the moss. You can either lay it in there with no roots and you know your node and then keep the humidity high all of that and then it'll root. With this one, part of me wants to put this in like a moss pot, and I'll show you what I mean when I say that. This is my Philodendron 69686. She's very cute, she's very happy, and she is actually growing in moss right now. So everything in the substrate is just straight up moss. And that's a good way to get your plants to root when it's a top cutting especially when it has a ton of leaves and you can't, you know, you don't want to lose your leaves, things like that. This is a good method for doing so and it's a good alternative to water. And so I think I am going to do the same thing with my Adabapoenzi and basically mimic what the seller of the philodendron did and replicate it on my Adabapoenzi. So I'm going to take my collection of moss and I'm just going to put it into a plastic container. You can use whatever you want. I would just recommend plastic just so it stays nice and humid in there. Um, I'm going to put this plant in and then surround the base here with moss. When you pack the moss in, I would basically, like I wouldn't pack it super tight. You basically want to make sure that it's tight enough so that the roots can actually feel the moisture in the moss and attach to it, but you want to give it enough air so that it's not smothered or too damp and then rot. So you kind of want to like loosely kind of poke it in there, but like not too much. That's the Adabapoenzi that I put in a sort of moss starter. We'll see how this one goes. Last but not least here, I have my Varicosum, who is throwing the biggest tantrum in the world. If you watched my massacre video, you'll know that I cut my varicosum down to basically the soil line. That plant with the roots is still in my greenhouse and I continue to water it in hopes that it grows back. This varicosum has been very gangly and the leaves aren't getting any bigger, so I figured it's risky because varicosums are so expensive. You know, I got mine in my international order, so it wasn't insanely expensive, but replacing this plant is so expensive 
So I took a, this was the one that I took the biggest risk in cutting up because I basically cut up the entire plant. I'm trying a few different methods to see what works best. I think ultimately I am gonna put it in moss, but I have this one node that I cut up and put into moss. And you can see the little stick right here and it's not doing great. Obviously it doesn't have roots yet because I only put it in there recently, but I'm pretty sure it is completely rotten. Actually, yeah, I can tell it's rotten. And this is all 100% my own fault. So when I say that I put everything in water right after filming the video, that included this node. I don't know why I just took an entire node and just dumped it in water. It was an oversight and it was dumb of me, but I am like 90% sure that this is a goner. I'm gonna try to see if I can salvage it, but right in the center of the stem, so I'm looking at the center of the stem, like a little bullseye where the center is brown and the outside is yellow, which basically tells me that this is dead. Um, the other side doesn't look too bad, um, but it's not looking great. It's spongy and dark. Yeah, that's rotting too. I don't think this is gonna survive. I, I'm pretty sure. But what I'll do is I will cut it back again and hope and pray that this works, but I don't have a lot of hope for this node, honestly. I had to cut this so far back. It is just like the itty bittiest of little nodes now. Let me try dipping it in cinnamon, just cause. Why not? This thing's gonna die anyway. Might as well try some savior methods here. I'll set that over there. So with this varicosum, it's not doing great. This bottom leaf is straight up just gone. I can take that off. But this one looks good. It has not rooted yet. I am encouraged anyway. I'm so stressed about this. I, I'm not even playing this up. I, I, I say things and I say it because that's what I've told myself I'm gonna do and I don't even... Just sitting here right now, I'm looking at it and I don't want to do it. I don't. You know what I'll do? I will cut off this bottom node and then put this back in water and hopefully it'll root from this second node here. So I've got this node right here and this node here with no leaves on it and then the leaves start at this node and then there's another node and another node. So. I'm going to cut it down here in between these two nodes and hopefully it'll root from this node. I'll make sure both are underwater, but hopefully I can cut this and make this grow or this section right here and have that grow into a plant. That, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm committed, I'm gonna do it. It's all fine. Regret nothing. This is all fine. I've cut it, it's official. And then I am going to once again, dip it in cinnamon. Just and then I'm gonna put this with my other plants that are callousing over. And then with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one in moss with the other, you know, sad little nub that I have left. I have disinfected my shears. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to start chopping all of these into pieces. I'm gonna do them one plant at a time just so I make sure I'm even with everything. And I'm going to start with my Standaliana runner and I am just going to chop all the nodes and then nestle them in a row into my propagation box. I will say with this method of propagation, you know, take this with a grain of salt. This is all stuff that I've just read and seen on YouTube. Of course, do your own research before doing this. Don't take my recommendations. The two things that matter the most when it comes to making propagations in moss or perlite is that you want to keep the humidity really high and then you want the temperature to be good. Some people use heat mats. I don't. I've, told, I've been told they're not necessary and I've successfully propagated things without there being any sort of heating mat. I would say just make sure you keep it around comfortable room temperature or maybe a little bit higher if you can. You know, I'm just gonna be putting this in my greenhouse, but aside from that, I'm not gonna give it any additional heat or really give it priority on light. Because the other thing I've read is that light for these sort of things 
isn't super critical. Of course, it needs some, but it's not, you know, don't give it high light or direct light or anything like that. That is unnecessary. I've cut them all up and they're all in here. For those curious, um, take your place your bets now for how many nodes were on that single runner that was three feet long. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen different nodes from that one Standaliano runner. That is impressive to me. So next, I think I'm going to get all of the Standaliana in there. And that is all of them. I didn't have a ton for an update. No roots on that one, that one, or that one. So none of these have rooted yet. That's all fine, because they're all gonna go in this box anyway. The problem with these strands is that it was kind of producing a leaf every other node instead of every node. For the ones where I can, I'm gonna chop and make a node, but still have a leaf on it, and then just kind of bury the node part with the little leaf sticking up. Trying to make educated guesses here. With this one in particular, I am more willing to kind of wing it and try things. That is it for the Skindapsis. So the only thing left to do today is to cut up the Siba Blue, and I'm going to try and do it the same way as I did the Standaliana, where the nodes are under the sphagnum moss and the leaves are above. If there are runners like this, I am just gonna do the same thing that I did with this Monstera Standaliana where I just cut it and then lay it on top. It's so strange. I'm noticing that like half of these are rooted and half of them aren't and the ones that aren't are rotting. So I wonder if this is just a problem with water propagating in the winter. I'm not sure but I'm not used to there being this many things rotting on me. So that's a little interesting. So like this cutting here has a bunch of little roots and it's doing great, but there's half of them in here are rotting. So I really don't understand why that is. Okay, so now all I have left is nodes for Ciba Blue. I can at least count the little nodes that I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen nodes for Ciba Blue, and then probably about 15 with leaves on it. I could make a bunch of plants out of this if it works. It is uh, mid-November now. This could be the exact wrong time to be doing this. I just really wanted to have a winter project to work on and to kind of, because I'm not probably going to be buying anything. In Michigan right now, we just went through daylight savings time, all of that, and basically what that means is that it is pitch black by five o'clock. Seasonal depression is real, guys. What I'm gonna be doing is not be buying any more plants for the duration of the winter, because honestly, bringing a plant home, having it acclimate in pretty much complete darkness, even with my supplemental lighting, that just seems cruel to me. <laughs> so I'm going to avoid really buying anything until at least we're on like the upward swing of it being lighter out. We're mid-November, we're not even at the darkest point of the year. Around December 21st or 22nd is when we have the solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. So it's gonna be sad for a minute, basically. It's just gonna be dark and gloomy, so no new plants. And all I wanted to do with this was basically, you know, try something new and see how it works. And if they die, I guess they die, but I just really wanted to have a project where I could work on my plants, try something new and see what happens. Since I won't be buying any new plants, I'll be missing out on that side of the experience. 
So now that these are all in here, I will give you a close up of what this looks like. Here is my finished propagation box. On this side over here, I have all of my Monstera Standaliana, all 15. There's about, you know, 10 here, five there. And then in this center section here, I have my Skindapsis that are all leafy and beautiful. And then over here, I have all of my Cebu Blue. I've kind of just stuck them straight into the soil. And here's all the ones with leaves, and here's all of the node-only sections of cuttings. But that's all of them. Now that you've seen it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a light mist on the top to make sure it's nice and humid. I will probably do a light spray on the lid and then lightly just lay that on top. It does keep the humidity high. And when I say high, I mean upwards of 80%, as close to 90 and above as you can without being just wet. So like 85 to 90 would probably be the ultimate goal. But that is my propagation box. It's gonna go in my greenhouse, just you know, on the floor. It's not gonna go on under any lights or anything like that. It should get enough ambient light from the lights in my greenhouse. So that is it. I'm going to clean up. I'm gonna replace all the water that I haven't replaced yet. I'm gonna clean up and give everything its new home. He's not nearly the camera hog that Maggie is. He he actually genuinely just wants to be around me, whereas Maggie just can tell that something's happening and she wants to be a part of it. I do want to give out a special thank you to all of those who did like my Halloween Massacre video. It was so much fun to film. It was fun to edit. It was crazy. It was... It was a weird idea I had. I'm like, why don't people embrace Halloween more? Like, is there something I can do that's like completely out of left field and kind of change the game a little bit? And I really enjoyed it. So I want to thank every everyone for being cool about it and enjoying it and all the nice compliments and comments that everybody said. Like, I really appreciate those. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of like landed with a big old thump. Like, I got it's my most um, ratioed video so far. It's got the most dislikes to like ratio that I've ever had. Clearly there are people who are not a fan of that type of video. I'm not gonna make it a habit or anything like that. It was just a one-time thing that I wanted to like experiment and try something. Um, but I wanna thank those of you who did enjoy it and commented, I really appreciate it. And I really loved making it, so. I'm glad it got some good response, even though I got some negative response at the same time. And I would actually like to say thank you to those of you who did a dislike and didn't comment. Because honestly, a dislike is one thing and that's, you know, it, it's a good indicator of whether you like the video or not. But if I had people on there just like ripping me to pieces on that video, I would have I would have been so sad. So I really appreciate everyone being nice and encouraging. Don't worry, I won't make a habit of it, but that was a one-time awesome fun time. But yeah, this is all the plants that I chopped up during that video. It's going okay. I've got some good success with some of them. I've got some mediocre to bad success with that varicosum, but everything else seems to be doing okay. I've got a little bit more rot on the pothos than normal, which I don't know what that's about, but either way it's in the prop box now, so it'll all get better soon. Or, or not, and I'll lose half of them, but like I said, I have about 30 Cibu Blue cuttings in there, so if half of them die, that's still a success in my book. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'll definitely make sure to update you on how everything's doing in the future. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you who like, comment, and subscribe. Those types of interactions really help grow my channel. So thank you very, very much for doing that. And I will catch you next time. Bye. My brain is moosh. It's like, can we go snuggle? Can you stop sitting at the table? Can we snuggle?